Good morning, everybody. We are going to get started on our next uh, section. And first, I want to do a little bit of practice with the distance formula, okay? So instead of doing one, two, three, and four, let's just focus on number one and number four. Okay, so do the distance formula, plug into that formula right there for number one and number four. All right, so we are going to piggyback off of our lesson from yesterday on area and perimeter, and now we are going to be talking about finding those when you have a figure that's in the coordinate plane or a figure that's graphed. Okay, so we're going to look through what to do, how to do it, um, and we're still using those exact same formulas. So steps for perimeter is that you need to make sure you've plotted all your points if it's not already graphed, and that you label all your vertices. You need to be able to figure out where the corners are of each of your figures. Then you're going to be using the distance formula to find the distances between those vertices, and that tells you your side lengths. And then we're going to add all those distances together. Okay, so make sure it's graphed. Make sure you've used the distance formula to find your side lengths, depending on what kind of a figure it is. Add them all up. For area, we're going to do the same things. Uh, we're going to have to use some slopes if we're talking about uh, slanted lines, right, or stuff like that to be able to figure it out. We're also going to be using distance formula, and then all of our answers, again, will be in square units, okay? So pretty much graph them, find your side links, and then we can start talking about the rest of the things that we need to work on. So a reminder of our area formulas, a rectangle or a parallelogram is length times width or base times height. Square is side squared. A triangle is a half base times height or base times height divided by two. And a trapezoid is a half of base one plus base two times the height. All right, so we're going to get right into this. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to figure out what these vertices are right here. So let me pull up this. We are going to find these vertices. So this is going to be 4, negative 3. This is going to be 4, 6, 7, 8, right? 5, 6, 7, 8, 4, 8. This is going to be negative 6, 8, and negative 6, negative 3, okay? So oh, let me move it over. So there is our vertices. So now we're going to do the distance formula. And based on this, I would highly recommend that you check two sides. Even though you're thinking that this is going to be a square, we need to know for sure. So in order to do that, grab this. I am going to look and make sure that this side right here and this side right here are the same. Okay? So to do that, we're going to use our distance formula. And if you don't remember what that is, it's labeled here on our warm-up for us. So you can have that uh, to reference what you're doing, okay? So we are going to have x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So I'm just going to say that this is x1 and y1, and this is x2 and y, y2. We're going to plug it in. So x2 is 4 minus negative 6 plus 8 minus 8. 4 minus a negative is going to be a plus, so 4 plus 6 is 10. This is zero, so it goes away. 10 squared is 100, and the square root of 100 is 10. So we're saying that this side right here is 10. Now, one thing that you'll notice is on a coordinate plane, when you have straight lines, not diagonal, but straight lines, you can actually count this. So let's see if that makes sense. One, two, three, four, just a second. Sorry for that interruption. Let's go back and start counting. So one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So looks like ten makes sense on that one. I'm going to check my work on this next side just to make sure that this really is a square. So I'm going to call this X1 and Y1, and then we have X2 and Y2. So again, I'm going to say 4 minus 4 squared plus 8 minus negative 3 squared. Okay. And this will be zero. This becomes an 11 squared. Ooh, all of a sudden we find out that this side is 11. So it's a good thing that we did the distance formula because if we would have just assumed that this was going to be a square, we would have been wrong. Okay, so we have one side that is 10, one side that is 11. So that means that this side is 10 and this side is 11. So the perimeter would be 10 plus 11 plus 10 plus 11 or 20 plus 22, which is 42. And you always just say units when it is on a coordinate plane. And then our area would be base times height or length times width, which is 10 times 11 which is 110, and you would say square units there. So we would say that the perimeter of this figure is 42, the area is 110, and it's a good thing we did the distance formula because we found out that this was not a square but a rectangle, even though it was very, very close. Okay, so let's move on to another one. Okay, this one is going whoop, this one is going to be a triangle. So we're going to have to do the same. The nice part about this is it's just asking us to find the area. So we automatically know we do not need the hypotenuse. Okay? We only need for a triangle the base and the height. So that means if we're going to look at this figure Oh, it froze for me. If we are going to look at this figure, we are only concerned with this part right here and this part right here. Okay, so again, we need to do the distance formula. So I am going to do that this is x1, y1, this is x2, y2. Again, we're using that distance formula from the warm up. So we are going to say x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So plus a minus is plus, so 3 plus 3 is 6. 2 minus 5 is negative 3. So 6 squared is 36. Negative 3 squared is 9. 36 plus 9 is 45. And the square root of 45, and we're going to estimate, obviously, is about 6.71. Okay? So that tells us that this side right here is 6.71. So now we need to do this exact same thing, but we're going to do it for the base. So this is already x2, y2, so let's make this x1, y1. We're going to do the same thing again. So x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 minus a negative 1 is 4. 2 squared is 4. 4 squared is 16. 4 plus 16 is 20. So if I take the square root of 20, I get 4.47, which means 4.47 is this side. And now I find the area. Our area is either one half base times height 
or base times height divided by two, right? Either one of those is fine. So here's our base, here's our height, 4.47 times 6.71 divided by two. 4.47 times 6.71 divided by two. Make sure you hit an equal sign in between and you get 14.99, but I'm gonna just round it to 15 square units for the area. Okay, so you can see that there is a lot of steps that have to happen in order for this to work. Okay, a lot of steps that have to happen. All right, let's go to this next one. Okay, now that we've done the last two using the distance formula, this one we're actually going to get a break on, and that is because we're dealing with all straight lines, okay? So if I was to look at this, I need a base one, I need a base two, and I need a height. Remember, we don't want to slant height when we're dealing with this. So I'm just going to count it. Okay, you can use a distance formula, especially if you're dealing with slanted lines. Like when we dealt with this problem, you can only use the distance formula. This one you could have counted. So we're gonna count this one, okay? Let me pull that back up. So I'm gonna say one, two, three, four is this side. I am going to say one, two, three, four is this side. And one, two, three, four, five, six is this side. So now we know our formula says one half base one plus base two times the height. So here's base one, here's base two, there's the height. One half base one plus base two times the height. Order of operation says, do our parentheses first. Four plus six is 10. 10 times four is 40, half of that is 20. You could say half of 10 is five, five times four is 20, and again, square units. Now, if we had to find the perimeter on this, we would have to still find this one, and this one you would have to do the distance formula on. Okay, anytime you have a slanted side of a figure, the only way to find the length of it is to do the distance formula. Okay, and then this one again is the same, and you'll notice that we want this height and we want the base, and both of those are on straight lines. Okay, both of those are straight lines. So. Let me pull this up again. This is a straight line that we can count. And this is a straight line that we can count. Again, if we had to find the area and we or a perimeter and we needed these two sides, you would have to do the distance formula. But we're just going to count for this. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for our height. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six for our base. And our formula again is one half base times height or base times height divided by two. They're both the same thing. So that means it would be seven times six divided by two or 42 divided by two or 21 square units. Okay, so it's really nice when you have figures that are on the actual coordinate plane. This one you could count. This one you could count. This one you could count. This one you cannot count. This one you had to do the distance formula. Okay, so you guys are going to have a couple of practice problems. And I'm not going to do this problem, but you'll notice that this one you would have to do the distance formula as well because it is on diagonals, okay? You cannot count a diagonal. But we're gonna skip that one. We've done a little bit. This is already getting long. I want you guys to work on this one. So find the perimeter, which means 
you need to count the two sides. They're both where they need to be. Count the two sides. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. Count the two sides and find the perimeter of this figure. Okay, and then this one is almost exactly like that last one that we uh, did for the trapezoid. Again, it's all on um, the coordinate plane, so you should be able to count it. So go ahead and find the area of this figure and get working on your exit ticket when you are finished with this.